So, third step is the determination of uh, response spectrum curve. So, this is an uh, standard design response spectrum prescribed in ASC 7 16 and also used in IBC 2021 and also used in BCP 2021. So, this is now our response spectrum. We need to construct it for our site if we want to perform RSA and also time history analysis. This respect this uh, spectrum have a role in the time history analysis also. Any guesses where? While modifying the the ground motions, we we have to modify our ground motions, we have to scale them up or scale them down such that they start representing the hazard level expected at our site and hazard level at our site is defined by this curve. right? So, we must modify our ground motions such that their spectra match with this target spectrum. Only then they can be applied for the dynamic analysis. So, which means construction of response spectrum is not only for RSA procedure, but also for, uh, for uh, uh, time history analysis just like the SDS and SD1 calculation is not only for ELF, it is being used here also and it will be used also in the THA right in the form of the spectrum. So, you need your SD1, you need your uh, SD1 here, SDS here and you need the a quantity called long period transition period TL which is somewhere between 8 to 10 second. It is a point after which the uh, the spectrum changes its slope. Previously, it is uh, it is inversely proportional to T. The equation is inversely proportional to T. But after this long period, it is inversely proportional to T square, right? So it changed the parabolic equation, and it is around eight to twelve second. Uh, and it is actually coming from a map uh, for US. Uh, there is a map which tells us for different locations what TL value should be used. Uh, unfortunately, we were unable to make such a map for Pakistan. So, you can use some conservative value. Uh, so, uh, the equation for first line is available for e the equation, uh, the, the, the range of time period for which it should remain constant uh, is available. This T naught and T s are the functions of S d s and S d 1. Right. So, all you need to know is SDS and SD1 and you can plot that curve. Right. So, T is varied, you will vary T yourself from 0 to it cannot be exactly theoretically 0. So, maybe 0 0.01 to 5 second or 6 second for example, up till where you want to plot that spectrum. So, this is that equation. This peak plateau actually represents the range of time period in which your future earthquake can have a peak in that range. Since it will be irregular, any response spectrum of a real earthquake is always irregular. So, you cannot exactly predict what time period will have that peak. So, they defined a range from T naught to T s depending upon your hazard level S T s and S D 1. Uh, there is a range in which that peak sustains. right? So, this is the uh, equation for uh, time period less than T naught, which means the ascending line. right? So, it is a linear equation. Uh, you first calculate T naught, which is 0 0.2 times S D 1 over S D S. T S is actually, uh, you can say 5 times of that T naught. Right? So, actually S D 1 over S D S is T S and 0 0.2 of that is T naught. Right? So, once you have your S D S and S D 1 for your site, uh, which is actually what? The design level spectral accelerations already modified for the local soil effect. Right? Once you have that, uh, you can put that in this equation, vary t from 0 to t naught and plot that first line. Right? From t naught to t s, keep it flat and from t s onwards, use this equation up till t l right? and after t l use this equation. Right. So, this will be your first line up till T L and then second line after T L. Right. So, that is how you will construct the, the design response spectrum for your site. 
it is already design level because it is using SDS and SD1. If you want MCE level for the purpose of uh, performance evaluation PBD, multiply that spectrum with 1.5, right? So then that will convert to your MCE level, right? So this is for ASC 7-16, but every code gives you an equation like this, which is the function of hazard parameter of your site. You put them and plot that spectrum, right? UBC 97 used to have an equation, which was not the function of SDS and SD1. It was a function of CA and CV factors. And those two factors depend on your zone and your site class, right? So, Z factor which is again dependent on the PGA value ranges, right? And then site class you select CA and CV and the equation of that design response spectrum is in the form of CA and CV. So, if you have your CA and CV you can construct that. So, there is a site specific uh, guideline also. There are certain cases in which you cannot use this spectrum. You must go for the site specific analysis. Uh, for example, uh, some structures in site class F, uh, I think all structures located on site class F and some structures which are located on site class E, for example, these ones where the SS is greater than 1, 1, uh, 1 G actually. If you have seismically isolated structures uh, and structures with damping systems which are located on sites with S1 greater than 0.6, go for site class, site specific analysis. And similarly, site class D and E with S1 greater than uh, 0.2, right. In, in that case, a site, a ground motion hazard analysis shall be performed and the guidelines for that performing that is given in chapter 21. There are some exceptions to those uh, three sets of structures also please read that one if your structure lie in exception you are still allowed to use the code spectrum right so please refer to chapter 21 uh, to have an idea about the site specific analysis right if you lie in that category this is an example where i plotted the uh, ibc 2021 spectrum and compared it with the UBC spectrum uh, for one particular site. In this case, it is Islamabad for an site class D. And also, uh, I selected a structural system here also in order to check whether that structural system is allowed uh, for the risk category and the hazard level of Islamabad or not. So, I selected dual system concrete shear wall with special moment resisting concrete frame. For this set of inputs, although there is no role of uh, uh, structural system in plotting the response spectrum, but uh, there is a role in actually checking whether the, the structural system is allowed there at that particular site or not. Right? So, I set up this tool such that if that system is not allowed, it will truncate the response spectrum, it will not show that or it will show some error warning or something. So, currently it is plotting for both codes which means this system is allowed for all the heights uh, in, uh, in this particular site. According to BCP as well as in 2007 as well as BCP 2021. So, this uh, comparison is plotted for uh, if you talk about BCP 2007. I selected the occupancy category 4, which is the standard occupancy, right? residential building standard. And uh, these inputs in, in green color. For BCP 2021, there is an additional information required to check whether that structural system is, is, ap is allowed or not, and that is risk category. So, I selected the standard risk category, risk category 2 which is comparable with the occupancy category 4 of UBC. right? So, in UBC there is an occupancy category 1 to 5, 1 is most severe. Uh, in the IBC 2021 or BCP 2021, we have risk category uh, and 1 to 4 
and in that 4 is the severe one right so i keep them constant almost same so this is the comparison now now the uh, in the peak spectral acceleration range there is around 30% increase in the spectral acceleration value uh, but that increase may not be reflected in your design output it depends on uh, your own time periods where is your time period locate compared to the compared to the spectrum shape right or which design combo govern your design so your design output may or may not be modified because of this uh, increase in the spectral acceleration values if you talk about a single degree of freedom system which has a time period here now we can safely say that there is there will be a 30% increase in its design output design action uh, because we exactly know its time period and no other mode to contribute so exactly that 30% difference in spectral acceleration will convert in the 30% increase in the force right so no contribution from other modes 